For the majority of the space age, asteroids have been relatively ignored by scientists and the media, and the only time we'd ever really talk about them was when we talked about the dinosaurs or movies like Don't Look Up. But we're starting to realize more and more that asteroids are actually one of the most important things in our solar system, and there are three key factors related to them that will play a key role in not only the future, but the survival of the human race. Right out between Mars and Jupiter lies the asteroid belt, an area of our solar system containing millions of asteroids of all shapes and sizes. But these are more than just pieces of rock floating in space, these asteroids have remained relatively unchanged for billions of years, and they can tell us a story of the very early days of our solar system, including how Earth came to life. We know that water was the ultimate key factor in life being able to evolve on Earth, and as far as we know, that would be the same anywhere else out in our universe. But where did that water come from? Well, right now, the leading theory is that the water was brought here by asteroids covered in ice. But was it a single event with one massive water-covered asteroid, or was it millions or billions of asteroids over a number of years? And is it possible that these asteroids might have been carrying the original microbes that later evolved to life as we know it? If humanity wants to reach out to the stars and become an intergalactic galactic civilization, figuring out how we got here is the most important step in understanding where we're going. And to get there, we are going to need a ton of resources, which asteroids can help with as well. By 2067, it's predicted that the world will have completely run out of the natural materials needed to fulfill its consumption demands. But thankfully, there are mountains of this stuff relatively close to us, and some asteroids contain more gold, iron, nickel, and cobalt than the entirety of our global metal reserve. This huge increase in resources is not just a massive payday, which I will touch on later, but but it also opens up a world of possibilities of what we can do with it. Let's take iron for example. It's estimated that there is 10 million more iron in the asteroid belt than there is on Earth. And while it might be too costly to send it back down to Earth, we could use it to build space stations, off-planet colonies, or even space cities, or we could build solar-powered satellites to harness clean and unlimited energy. A lot of these asteroids are also filled with water, and some of them can be made up of 10% water in ice and clay. If we are a space-faring civilization, we can use this water to drink, turn into breathable oxygen or rocket fuel, and it's also great for absorbing cosmic radiation, protecting our future astronauts. So you know that asteroids are filled with tons of valuable resources, but do you know how much they're worth? Well, whoever is the first person to go mine these asteroids will probably be the first trillionaire in human history. There are three in particular that researchers are very interested in. The first two are 1986DA and 2016ED85. Including the market deflation that would happen bringing these asteroids back, these two asteroids are worth about 11.6 five trillion dollars each. If you split that into a 50 year mining period, they would bring in a collective 466 billion dollars a year. But that is nothing compared to the 226 kilometer wide asteroid 16 Psyche, who is worth about 10,000 quadrillion dollars. If we were able to bring it back down to earth, we would be able to give every single person on this planet roughly 93 billion US dollars. We're still a long way away from getting there, but a lot of scientists think that asteroid mining could be the thing that leads us into a post scarce world. But a post-scarcity world is only good if people are alive to see it, which is where the third benefit to asteroid mining comes in, safety. Out of all of the potential ways that humanity might get wiped out, the only one that can completely annihilate us with 100% certainty is a large asteroid slamming into our planet, just like what happened to the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. There's actually a popular slogan among scientists that says, asteroids are nature's way of saying, how is the space program coming along? Now, to completely wipe out all life on Earth, an asteroid would have to be about 96 kilometers wide, and we know where to find about 90% of them, and they present no threat to humanity over the next century. But that still leaves about 100 extinction event sized rocks that we haven't found yet and we don't know where they are. So if the day comes where one of those is flying towards us, we need to know how to defend ourselves, which was the whole point of NASA's DART mission in 2022, which was the first time in human history we successfully changed the orbit of a celestial body. And this is why they're launching a new observatory called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time later this year to look for missing asteroids using infrared wavelengths, which will not only help us in terms of safety, but it'll also let us know what metals these asteroids asteroids might be carrying. Once all of the large asteroids have been found, their orbits mapped, their sizes known, and the resources that they're made up of are known, the barriers to entry to mining them will be a lot lower. And after we've visited a few of them, learned about their origins, and how to deflect them should one be headed our way, we'll be in a great place to actually start mining them. With the privatization of space and space tourism becoming more prominent by the end of the decade, the demand for in-space materials should be picking up as well, and asteroid mining might be the perfect solution. And if you're interested in learning about how asteroid mining plays into Salma Hayek's plan to save the world, you can click the video next to me.